Liverpool, welcome to Frex Knows Best. It's time to jest and I have the beautiful. It's been an honour to have the... Well, we've shared many experiences in a certain location, which we're going to share with you. She goes by the name of Diane Leandro. Thank you and welcome to Frex Knows Best. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. And I'm so honoured to be here with you. Oh, as man. I admire your work a lot. So when you invited me, I felt like very honoured to be here. I mean, I'm honoured because um, we've shared so much together. And when I wanted to start this podcast, I wanted to do it with people I've shared the most in the last two to three years. Experiences, um, epic experiences, should I say, that we've shared. And some yeah. moments where hopefully in the future, it's something that we as all of us who I've met, um, can build on from now on. So uh, I think the well, last time we were playing together was New Year's Eve. Or oh, you yeah. were there at New Year's Eve. I didn't, I'm not sure if it was, uh, we got to do the countdown, if that's yeah, correct. Yeah, we were playing together during mm. the countdown. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really special moment. It was my first countdown ever, because last year I was playing there as well, but I had a break between mm. the time for the countdown. So this was my very first countdown and I was freaking out a little bit, like I need to get this right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, you got it right. It was such a buzz. I mean, I had the videos. I was doing, a, I got a video of you as well and everyone in the room. We had the Brazilian drummers, the dancers, and then we had that amazing fireworks display being on the 39th floor of Sushi Samba and looking at that. I mean, that was my third New Year's Eve at Sushi and it just, just keeps getting better. And, it, so and it's sad. It's sad that it's come to a little bit of a pause at the moment because that was a that was our nice. It was like a second home for us, you know. Yeah, for me. yeah, absolutely. For me, I think I spend more time there than on my own home actually because I used to play there. If not there in Covent Garden every weekend, so yeah, felt well, felt like home. Yeah, I mean, I was speaking to James, Mr. James Fox, that you know. I've done a podcast with him, and man. We were just talking about all the memories um, in Sushi Samba. And like, I was just telling him it was like my second home. Everyone I speak, I speak to, um, big shout out to Charlotte and Fallon um, for organising this. But the amount of people I've met, especially like yourself, Mr. James Fox, Sunana, all of these relationships with Bill Dan, it's just such a special place for me. So, uh, yeah. I'd just like to say big up to uh, Sushi Samba and long may it continue and hopefully we'll get back there again. But I want to get a little bit of a background of you because we don't get to uh, have much of a deep conversation because we're professional, aren't we? we? We do our job. I'm playing the sax, you're DJing. So I was it's, just wondering. It's a challenge to have a conversation <laughs> when you are like in the middle of a DJ set and, and the sax playing. So yeah, we don't get to, to talk much, but I think exactly. uh, the heart talks loud, louder than everything. So every time when I see you, I know it's going to be fun. So we, we talk with the eyes of the body language is really, really cool. That is amazing because I was saying to James, DJs, it, it's like a dancing partner. If you're dropping the right music and you got a vibe, I'm going to be going for it. It's just like, it's just me. We bounce. And every time we've done a set, it's been a vibe. Me and you are always smiling, dancing, footage. People always asking me when they see you in my footage, like, who is that lady? Like, she's always got a vibe, you know, and so on. So uh, you definitely on the social media have got this energy, you're like a spark, which kind of everyone wants to know, like, well, everyone's drawn towards you. And I was as a performer. So let's go back. Now we're going back. Way back, back into time, 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 time. time. And then what got you into uh, DJ and music? Wherever, where did it all start for you? I have always been like the kid that would sh do shows, like fashion shows for the family, that would do. Um, how do you say when you're just uh, lip syncing yeah. on all musics and dressing up because the voice, I always, uh, I, I was aware my voice wasn't that great. So I was doing lip syncing and things like that. And yeah, so I have lots of memories of my childhood when I, I had this thing inside me that I want to perform. I want to be in front of people. I want to connect with people. And I start uh, taking ballet lessons uh, when okay. I was six years old. Mm -hmm. And I got into music 
um, on the very young age, because a ballet dance is not just about the dance, it's about the rhythms, mm -hmm. about the coordination with the mm -hmm. body and things like that. And listening to classic music was really, really important to me. I used to be like um, in ballet lessons all day after school, like for hours and hours. Not right in the beginning, but when I was about uh, 12 years old, I joined the um, the ballet dance group for, that represented the town was living, which is Santos. Uh-huh. Okay. And then we would spend hours and hours like uh, rehearsing and doing like choreographies and routines and things like that. And on this place, on the Town Hall uh, Theater, we had like a live piano player on our lessons. Okay. So this was super cool. She yeah. would play for us and was so beautiful and magical. And yeah, I used to do like a lots of shows representing my city. And I was I always loved to be like in front of a crowd. I always liked this connection that only artists can understand. Yes, of course. And probably for my listeners here, um, as you could tell by her beautiful accent, she isn't from London. Would you like to tell everyone where were you born? Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Oh, man. And what part of Brazil? Because that place is massive. Yeah, because Brazil is a huge place. Mm. So I'm from the countryside of Sao Paulo State. Sao so, Paulo. Okay. Yeah, everyone knows Sao Paulo, the city. But yes. what people don't realize is that Sao Paulo is a massive state. Mm -hmm. It's the most like multicultural state in Brazil. As many other people from Brazil go to live there because it's a huge like capital of many industries and mm -hmm. things like going on. Sao Paulo City has many similarities to London, but then outside Sao Paulo, there are like villages, like the village where I came from, it's called Piracaya. Mm -hmm. And by the time I left uh, my, my, my village, it was about two, two um, 12,000 people. Wow. Living there, okay. so right. tiny, tiny, yeah. and then I went to live in Santos. That's where I lived the last thirteen years before I moved to London. I was living in Santos, which is a bigger city. It's like a, a town. Uh, it's by the beach. It's mm -hmm. really, really beautiful. It's on this place um, where I used to do classic ballet when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Actually, I moved a couple of times, so I was spent like part of my childhood in Piracaya. Then when I was a teenager, I went to Santos. Then I came back to Piracaya and then I stayed the last 13 years of my life in Santos. There, my life in Brazil, I mean. <laughs> wow. I mean, Brazil is one of them places which is on a tick list of mine. Um, when I When I was in a band, the Brazilian, we had two brothers which were from Sao Paulo and uh, Bruno and Igor and uh, they the stories you used to hear from them was like they thought when I was in a band and they heard there was Brazilian in the band it's going to sound strange but they thought I was the Brazilian because <laughs> of how I looked and I didn't quite understand it but it kind of made sense when they kind of showed look this is what they all look like because when I looked at them they look very um um, very pale Brazilians, you know, you've got different complexes for Brazilians, but they were very pale and they look more maybe French <laughs> than anything else than Brazilian. And I understood from their mum's side that they've got their uh, Italian in them. So they've got the Italian and Brazilian mix. So that's what kind of gave them that fair skin. But they, they always kind of, the food out there and the, the vibe, the culture um, has always drawn me to it and drawn me to the... Um, well, just, uh, I would say the music as well, because no matter what genre I go into, when you hear the Brazilian, the carnival, I mean, we have the Notting Hill carnival, but it's nothing compared to the yeah, it's Brazilian different. carnival. Because Notting Hill is more the Caribbean side of carnival. Yeah. The yeah. original Brazilian carnival, you get like this sense only if you go to, to Brazil, like especially in Rio, Salvador and Sao Paulo. I mean, I see the show, my uncle and my nan, like my nan loves putting it on the TV. Because the show that the Brazilians put in, like, it's just, it's just, you just, I can't, it's unbelievable what you're seeing with your eyes. Like, the outfits, the amount, the celebrations, I mean, man, what a place. But there must be carnivals, not just there, on that kind of period, going all, all over the yes, place, right? All over. So, the, the biggest ones are um, Rio de Janeiro, mm -hmm. Salvador, and then right. Sao Paulo, the biggest ones. But then you have 
all over the the city even in my village <laughs> with uh, 12 000 people of we course used to have, like carnival parties yes yeah yeah amazing um so it's coming from your background that music all around you just gave you that vibe like i'm gonna go and follow this path so this brings it up to you said you moved here when did you move to the uk how long ago was it Oh, I'm very good with dates. On the mm. 20th of October, 2016. 2016. Amazing. Can you imagine that? Let me just have a little think here. Because uh, you're here for about... Seven years. Yeah, for seven years. And then within five years, this thing called COVID kicks in. And you must be thinking, what the... You know what I mean? Because things are just kind of get. You're just kind of getting... You're probably you're just uh, getting grounded, finding your feet as well in this place was it was it easy to get things started when you first arrived in the uk how did you find it um, i wasn't i wasn't a dj before no no, no. no, no of course i've been working as a dj mm -hmm. so when i first come to london right uh i didn't know how to speak english my english is still really bad but imagine not speaking at all it was really yeah, yeah. horrible of course, of course. But you sound, I mean, whatever lessons you're taking, big up to the teacher, where you, wherever you've been learning, because your English sounds good right yeah, now. Yeah, so. I, I spend like uh, lots of time, energy and actual money uh, mm. learning English. Um, I was already 32 when I moved here. So I, I think after 30, it's kind of more challenging to learn languages. I think when we are young, of course. it's much easier to learn. So yeah, I put lots of effort. I was studying and I always push myself like... Mm -hmm. When I arrived, I started like studying half of the day and the other half I was working as a nanny. Okay. Yep. Yeah. For a mm -hmm. family, uh, the mom was uh, Chinese, but she was right. raised in the US mm -hmm. and the dad was Scottish. Until now, I don't understand a word what the man says. Like <laughs> the Scottish accent for me is another language that mm -hmm. I need to learn because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. It's a hard one. And then after that, I stayed there for about six months. I realized I already learned all the vocabulary I could take from that experience because it's quite limited. And yeah. then I decided to go and work as waitress. So then I could uh, learn more accents and, I don't know, have another perspective. Yeah. And I gave, me, I gave myself um, a deadline. I said, mm -hmm. I have one year to learn English and go back to the business area because I'm a business administrator. Uh, back in Brazil, I used to coordinate a HR of a massive company, a railway company. I would be responsible wow. for 700 uh, direct employees wow. plus um, about 150, 30 contractors, you know, like third parties. Wow. So, yeah, I had this big background in recruiting, selecting uh, people's development, career plan and things like that. And I want to go back to that area. And I, I gave myself like one year to learn like the basics and start yeah. like on an assistant position. So then I could improve my English inside the business world. So that's what I did. Yeah. And I worked on this company for about one year. It was a technology company as an um, assistant, like administrator, general administrator. Actually, a couple of weeks after I was hired as a general assistant, they put me to work on projects because they saw this girl, she's dynamic, even though she doesn't speak very well. <laughs> <laughs> she, she knows what she's doing because I already had the skills inside me. I just didn't know how to put this outside you know like yeah. to communicate um mm -hmm. or coordinate people right. or things like that so then um after one year i was promoted as a project manager so right. it was just the time i needed to have that click and yeah. being, being able to communicate with people so i was working on projects uh in for multi millionaires installed like in home automation uh, Holland Park villas and things like that. So mm -hmm. I would coordinate since the installation of cables until the final programming with the programmers, like for different softwares for these home automations and stuff. Wow, hang on. So uh, that is like the contrast of the person I thought I knew, the <laughs> person like you just described there. So um, with that issue, I mean, that sounds amazing that like you've you managed that epicness, but something as you come, you came here, drew you towards... I want to change this up. What gave? What was that little point in your in your life before? It's time for a change. Um, I think 
right in the pandemic, uh, mm. I started thinking about what's my real purpose in life, what I should do in my life. Amazing. And then I decided to open my own, com my own company. It's called mm. Restart in London, when I help people to do this way that I did, like mm -hmm. leave the jobs, like that's not your actual job, like being a waitress or a nanny is real good and great jobs. But some people, they like doing other things. So then I started to use uh, my knowledge from Brazil in HR plus my my knowledge working uh, inside the industry here. And then I started like helping people to build this path to get where they want to, to be. And then I started this um, in October 2020, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. And yeah, since that, I have been like helping many people mm -hmm. to follow their dreams. And I did like, um, um, I certified myself as an NLP programmer, coach and things like that. And in every single coaching section, I would say to people, but what is your real dream? What is your call inside you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after helping people, like uh, yeah, yeah. thousands of people to learn that, I started to, that question started coming back to me again and say, <laughs> what is going on? Why, why do I say people do that and I don't do what I want to do? It's amazing. It's amazing. We do this. We do this. We just like we're so good at giving. Then we forget to the most important person, which is ourselves. And we yeah, and I think I think that just happened in for a lot of people um, during COVID. Yeah, and then I start to feel like mm, I'm a fraud because I'm t telling people do this <laughs> and I'm not doing it myself. Yeah. And when yeah. I start to asking this question to me, I said I always wanted to be a DJ. Why I never followed this dream. And the answer back in time was because I never had like much financial um, support. I live on my own since I'm 15. So um, DJing for me sounds like a, a big investment and you would need people like to help you because sometimes you don't make money as an artist. Yeah. So that's why for me, I think that was a bit far away from my reality. Right. But then I started to think about how I could do that. And I went to Ibiza and I met some nice people from the industry, like people that works uh, with vintage culture. Mm -hmm. And we shared like amazing conversations and my mind was just like, boom. So then I came back to London and I started like researching for schools and I, um, I enrolled myself in London Sound Academy. Right. And then I did all the levels, but like I was focused. I was like, boom, 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 boom. Like I would practice day and night. I would find the music. I would see what I could do to get there quicker because okay. me, it took so long uh -huh. to make that decision that I say mm -hmm. it's now or never. Hold up, hold up. So you went down that path to learn about your craft and all that kind of stuff with DJing. So how long did that, how long was that um, whole course or? Uh, how long did that take you just to uh, complete the it? The course can take a month. Or okay. Two, uh, no, a month. I'm no, I'm exaggerating. Mm -hmm. um, because you can do on your own uh, pace. It could right. be one month if you uh, if you want to do that, mm -hmm. um, or could be one year. Depends mm -hmm. on the pace you take. As I mm -hmm. say to you, I wanted to immerse myself as much as possible. So my first lesson as a DJ, yeah. I yeah. didn't know how to turn on a DJ controller on the 27th of October, 2022, 2022, hold on, or mm -hmm. oh my God, my mind. This all good. No, yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was 2022. Okay. I'm confused now. <laughs> it's all good, all good, all good. I know that mm -hmm. by uh, October, November, December, January, three months later, I had mm -hmm. my first gig that was at Ministry of Sound. Hold up. I mean, I can speak to people. That's like one of the most iconic um, venues. Um, for anybody who's listening, it's down like South London, Elephant and Castle. Massive brand. And you're telling me after three months of your dedication, you got to play at Ministry of Sound. I now, did. how was that for you? That whole feeling there, you've got your audience, you've got the crowd, you're in this room, you've got the lights, you've got all the equipment, you know there's legends which have been playing there before. How did you feel? I felt like 
in another reality, like I was outside of my body kind of experience, you know, because it was so magical. It was just like a dream come true. And I had my friends there and I say, yes, I became a DJ and I play a minstrel song. Everyone's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing this is why i'm loving this podcast because i get to see, hear the stories and now i kind of makes a lot more sense with how you are now because of that determination from yourself from doing that course like you said you're working at every hour you can possible and then you just went for it you went straight for ministry of sound i mean yeah. that's it now you know there's your trajectory it just keeps going that's so true perfect that's so so true mm. and then uh i got my first gig at sushi samba on the carnival of that same year like in february on the following month i got my first oh, wow. gig at sushi samba and how did that happen like did you kind of uh, email or was it somebody knew you knew what was the connection yeah it was such a great story it was uh dennis that recommended me but i didn't know it was him until a long long time ago because oh, okay. um, I got contacted by Charlotte and then mm -hmm. she messaged me on Instagram. So I thought she found me on Instagram. She, right. never, she never told me the entire story. And then after a while, when she invited me to become a resident uh, in October that same year, because I started playing February and I had like a, a few successful gigs during that year that everyone was liking my music and I was bringing people together and was being so nice. And then in October, when I was in Miami, uh, she messaged me and she asked me if I, if I would like to be a resident there. And yeah, it was so cool. And I got so, so happy. And then a few days when I came back to London, she gave me the dates I was going to play and I was like so excited about it. I remember I was passing in front of uh, Burger and Lobster, I think. And I entered in just to have a glass of champagne and celebrate that moment. Because Amazing. I'm this kind of person. When something really good happens, I want to celebrate. Because this gives of the course. universe. Of course. This gives the universe like, let's repeat more moments like, like this. Yes. yes. I don't know if you believe yes. that. But I, I totally do. Look, I'm spiritual. <laughs> the more you're going to get to know me... Um, as we carry on, I'm I'm 100% spiritual. I believe in the universe. I believe in uh, when you're on your right path, everything's easy. Everything flows. Everything fits in. And I feel like listening to you, your direction, and when you just made that decision, it's like the whole universe just came together for you and said, yeah. this is what you should be doing. And seeing you on the stage, it's like, yeah, of course, this is what you should be doing. And your social media, like just for all the listeners, they had so social media is, just ridiculous man like, <laughs> i mean hearing the story you guys hearing the story now i'm looking at all the, the videos the pics this lady is living the life and it's so good to see and it's it's good for other people when they're listening to this to hear the inspiration of if you put that little focus and then and you go for it you put the time into it it's not very complicated just that time and want and not putting those barriers up which i feel like you cleared a lot of those barriers because you went i I want to do it and I'm just going to go for it. Next, you know, three months later, you're in Ministry of Sound. Yeah. And then um, I met Charlotte that same week and mm -hmm. I said, oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, all the opportunity and I'm so happy with the dates you gave me, etc. And then I said to her, this is a story that I stopped and I had a glass of champagne. So then she said, mm -hmm. okay, let's celebrate again. And we had a glass of champagne. And then I was, we, we both together. And then... Um, I said to her, how is the universe so amazing that you found me on Instagram? And she said, no, I didn't find you on Instagram. It was Dennis. Like, he, I met him so many times. And right. he's such a humble person. He never said to me anything. But he was aware. And he, and he, and he well, you definitely had an effect on him. Um, but he Dennis. never, he never <laughs> said, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He that um, recommended to you, you know. <laughs> I never say that. Oh, man. In that moment, I felt such a gratitude. And he was done that day. So I said, okay, give me a minute. I stopped what I was doing. And I went mm -hmm. there and gave him a big hug. And I said, thank you so much. Because you gave my second home to me. You know, they big both shout out. Dennis and Charlotte. They, they are amazing yeah. people. Big shout out to Dennis. I always remember when I first started. I was getting emotional. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I can understand. Because it's like, that's changing. That's like a big change. And... I understand now what you're saying because I've been there 
the just to get that foot in the door and recognition, um, DJ, even as a saxophonist, because I came into this world without thinking I was going to play play saxophone along with a DJ. Um, before you knew me, before Sushi Samba, I was living in Antigua for three years. Oh, and well. I was with a band there. I wasn't. I didn't even think I was coming back. Um, to cut a long story short, uh, the band broke up and then came back. COVID hit. And then I was thinking about what am I going to do? And then people, um, well, had some advice. Oh, go solo, play this. But confidently, when you go on your own and you walk into these big venues and the big venue like Sushi Sambo or wherever, you've got to have a little bit something about yourself. And when you get those little moments, and I relate to you in that, when you achieve those little moments that you have a great night, the response is good. I do do the same as you. I do reward myself. And I give myself a little pat on the back saying, well done. That was a lot of pressure. But because of your steeliness and because of my di- my drive, and I've won it so much, I got through it. And it's just such a nice feeling. So that's why I can say I can relate to you with that whole feeling. And it is emotional because when I look back, I've had some of the most, um, I say the, the most epic times I've had as a saxophonist has been at that venue, Sushi Samba. Yeah, yeah, it's such, such an amazing place. Mm. All these staff members, I love yeah. all of them. Um, every time when I get there, they're like, Oh, is it you? Yes, yeah, they're <laughs> so happy to see me there. And yeah, yesterday I had another amazing moment. I was playing at the staff party, and everyone was dancing like till the end. They didn't want the music to stop. They're like, You know, it was such a, such a great uh, fun. I was playing the tunes for them, like the things that they like. Of course. Um, and then it was such an epic night. And I love everyone that works there and everyone that I met through that venue. It's such a special place to me. I mean, this place, uh, I mean, I played a couple of the, the Christmas parties. And one of the, I think one of the managers came up to me when I was at the bar and just said, you're, you're one of us. You're part of the family now. And that feeling, you know, I played in many venues, but for the staff and all that, how they make you feel welcome, the energy. I go into that place and I was saying it to James the other day. They go, it's not a job because you're getting paid to do something you're enjoying. And we're enjoying it. Like when I'm playing with yourself, we're just enjoying. We're having the best time. And people on social media, I know a lot of my friends, they're hating me. They're like, <laughs> look at this life we are living. But they don't understand behind the scenes. It takes a lot of uh, uh, strong decisions and uh, focus to yeah. even get into that position. And just listen to your story. I'm still just taken back by your first, <laughs> your first gig was in Ministry of Sound. Amazing. Now I'm looking here and uh, you've done quite a bit because you've got We Are Festival. Um, in the iconic, like apart from Sushi Samba and Ministry of Sound, where else would you say is like... Uh, venues you enjoy playing and you've had a or yeah you've had pretty much a great experience oh eden ibiza eden right open the door to ibiza please that that venue is just amazing i love the sound system there it was just like amazing night you know i got to play right after undersea and chasing status like on the same yeah the same stage so <laughs> Yeah, they, they passed the decks to me and I thought, oh my God, now what? everyone is going to leave the house because who, who <laughs> came here to see and see Shayton stayed to, yeah, yeah. What, what am I doing here? And the people stayed in shirtless and crazy shouting, it was really cool. Hold up, so you had Chaser State is doing their usual drum and bass set? And I did my drum and bass set. Hold up. <laughs> hold, hold up. Okay. Because I'm, ne- I'm just saying for the listeners, yeah, while well, I'm getting a little bit excited here. I've never experienced a drum and bass with you, right? Yeah, yeah. It's- and I'm a, I'm a drum and bass head, like, with all my lot. We've grown up massive, like, drum and bass heads. And don't get me wrong, I love all types of music, but I have the, some of the best memories with my lot with drum and bass. And there's, um, uh, was it DJ Marky from Brazil and Patif? We grew up with those guys. Yeah. You know, and they were the biggest, like that whole Brazilian influence came over, you know, and to drum and bass and just changed the scene with, I think they joined up with V Recordings, which was, I think is Brian G, but yeah, tell us more. So you've done a drum and bass set 
Go for it. Tell us, please. Yes, yeah, it was such an incredible thing because uh, to mix drum and bass is pretty much um, different than mixing the other rhythms. Mm -hmm. um, you don't mix on the on the beat like one, two, three, four. The, mm -hmm. There is like a, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you mix on that. <laughs> That's yeah. quite a challenge. And mm. I learned how to uh, mix drum and bass in about a month before I knew I was going to play there. Right. So I used to listen to drum and bass, but I never mm -hmm. mixed the drum and bass. And then I had the opportunity and I say, yes, I'm going to take it. Oh, man. So what, how did you find it like that crowd? Because I always find drum and bass crowds, they're different energy, you know, like house. Don't get me wrong. House crowds are there. They were vibing. But drum and bass crowds like. They're just waiting for you to just kind of uh, do the drops, yeah. do the mixes, and they just can't get enough of it. And then obviously being drum and bass, as soon as that bass line, like we're, we're um, what would you say, um, bass line addicts, we can't get enough of the bass line. So it exactly. came on after Chase and Staters, Daniel Drummer Bass it. This is just an epic podcast, man. I am yeah. loving this. So, um, so that was Eden. I mean, you've been to IB for how many times, would you say? As a DJ, I came only mm. twice. It's been two years. Okay. I'm a DJ. Like now on the 26th of January, it's been two years. years. It's yeah. only been two years as a DJ and you've already done ministry, spare sushi samba, and, and you got to come on after Chase the Status. This is... I can't wait to see where your, your journey is going to go from here on. So um, um, I can tell you. Uh, the, yes, my bring it on, please. Next, yeah. Mm. But uh, in Ibiza, uh, I played at... Um, Romeo's, which is like a Elvis Presley kind of vibe. So uh, I, I got to play like some rock and roll, Madonna and all those things on the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, I played at the Ithaca Beach Club. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, I played at Vintage Culture after party at his villa. Wow. Yeah. I played that must be some after party. Yeah. Three nights. Mm -hmm. I played... Um, with, it was Vintage Culture, Andre Marques from Brazil, Bora User, which is the guy that plays with the guitar and he sings alone. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. It's like yeah. a madness. Yeah. Um, and lots of other Brazilian DJs that were there. And yeah, such a great, great opportunity to be playing on the same decks as these icons. And would you be, look, what's your plans for this year with IB? Are you looking to get back out there? Yeah, so last year I did a takeover at Ocean Drive. So okay. I, I brought a DJ that I inspired to become a DJ with my story. I Amazing. met him one year in Ibiza and I told him, um, I met him on my first year in Ibiza, which was 2022. And then uh, we met at Mumbo and I told him that I just became a DJ like months ago when I was there already doing my shows. And he, go, he went back to Chicago and he started learning. And then I brought him back uh, in 2023 to my takeover at Ocean Drive to play his first gig there. Wow. So I think, I think with the listeners, whoever's listening, I think you're going to be inspiring a lot more other people. You might be getting a lot more messages because people are thinking, hang on a minute, two years and you've managed to do all of this. It's kind of, yeah, it's definitely inspiring. And I feel even with everything you're doing and, and I feel us as musicians, hence, why I set up this podcast is for to share these stories to give people that story you know that is possible because like you said during COVID not just you but everyone was reflective about what am I doing what's going on it was like everyone waking up I'm going to probably share this with many podcasts because I feel like it was such a pivotal moment for musician performers DJs agencies to kind of work out where we're going to take this right now. And a lot of things where people decided, look, I'm going to go down this path have blossomed. A lot of people have tried to go back to doing what they were doing, haven't really gone forward and not really happy. So I think uh, it's great people hearing your story. So this, what's the plans for Diane this year? I mean, obviously, um, going back to Ibiza, but what about venues like what are you doing is this full-time for you or are you still balancing out with a full-time job or part-time job what's happening in your world yeah i'm still with my company restarting london 
But okay. um, I have like days that I work uh, on my music production, days that I work on my sets, like organizing my sets and things mm -hmm. that I need to play. And there are days that I work at Restart in London, which is my company, is still like helping people with the career path and how to get to the jobs. Where can they... people find that? Is there a link or you not a link, but I can put a link after the show but would you like to tell them where they can find that restart yeah it's just put restart uh, dot in london and then you'll find me there okay, on instagram perfect. yeah perfect i have my uh, my website as well which is www.restartinlondon.com all right so then you're just balancing out finding like um, dj work and as well doing the balance with the restart yes man i can't wait so finish up it'll be where would you see Diane in a couple of years' time? Where would you like to be? Um, I, you are going to see me like in the biggest festivals, like Tomorrowland, like Lollapalooza. Um, definitely at Mambo. This is my place that I really want to play like mm -hmm. one day because this is my favorite place like in Ibiza. Um, uh, every time I go there, I, I go there, but pretty much like every night before I go anywhere else, I go there because you can see for free all the amazing DJs, even the, the residents, they're amazing. And then you can see Fat Boy Slim, you can see David Guetta, like everything for free by the beach. So my dream is one day to play on that little window. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think the way you're going, I just see it's, it's, a, it's guaranteed to happen. But you did touch on like, I haven't come across this um, or asked you the question. What is your biggest DJ? Who do you, who do you like to follow? Like what's your vibe ins inspiration? So I really love Vintage Culture because he inspired me a lot. And because of this meeting with him and his crew was when my mind had this switch, like this kind of change that yeah. made me go to follow my dream and do. It shows that if you want to do something, you really can do. I, I never met like really close, very famous DJs. I, I know like many DJs, but, but never not like a superstar DJ. Mm -hmm. And meeting them and seeing that there are people like us, that, that means everyone can get there one day if they work enough, you know. You broke the barrier. Another barrier you broke. Because um, everyone's, everyone's human. Everyone's just normal. We, ha we hold them up. Because of like how it is on social media or marketing, even when people see me and they meet, and this is why I wanted to set up the podcast as well, is so people can get to know me because they just know this guy. He's the sax guy. Like we can't approach. Like oh my god, but I'm just like I'm just normal, a normal guy. Now your style, um, vintage culture. What is because everyone, for the people that don't know the integrity of uh, of house music, is split into so many categories. What would you say your favorite category? Because I think on here it was saying Latin, you like Afro, Latin and tech house. Is that your main go-to for when you're doing the mix? Uh, actually, I put there melodic as well. Uh, melodic, yes. Melodic and, and progressive techno. because it uh, takes me to the back when I start going to raves and stuff on the yeah. trance music. Yeah, I think progressive house and melodic house, they have this kind of vibe that takes me back on that time with yeah. the side trends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I start producing my own tracks. And my first two tracks I released last year are Progressive House by oh. Off Us Records. Um, okay. I met those guys at Ministry of Sound one of the mm -hmm. times I was playing there. And Demo, they are a duo, is Demo and Deo. And Demo became like a good friend of mine. He's such like um, a very nice person. And by the time I sent to him, I say, look, this tracks, I know he has this label called Off Us Records. And by the time I sent to him the tracks that I finished called yeah. Overcoming and Energy, he, he didn't say a word. He said, yes, it's signed, you know. So and I that was it. I didn't need to chase other record labels, nothing like that. It was just done. We are okay, because released... I'm producing as well. So I'm just curious. Um, what are you using? What do you use to write your music on? Uh, Logic. Logic, yeah? yeah? It's just okay. because I have MacBook and it's, it's easier. Everyone yeah. say that Ableton is much better, but because I had uh, Apple, I think it was easier just to start learning with this. <laughs> um, I'm still learning. Uh, you always will. Exactly. Even yeah. as a DJ, I'm still learning mm. like new things every single day. 
But mm. as a producer, I find it more challenging. And I was so proud when I could finish those two tracks and then get signed by on the first track, on the first try, the first label, first friend. Yeah. Yeah. And believe it or not, uh, my tracks, they were on the top 10 of Progressive House at Beatport for five days and got to, the seventh, got to the seventh position. Listen, I hope everyone's listening to this, right? It's real. This ain't fake. It's real. This lady is speaking facts here. My God, this is amazing. And I'm looking here because you've got, uh, you've done the EP and you got you can find your stuff on Spotify, um, Beatport. Apple. Apple. Deezer. Deezer. And the, and the names of the track so people can know where to find Over, them. Overcoming. Overcoming, yep. And energy. And energy. You hear that? So everyone out there, yeah, get get involved. Exactly. Um, and I hopefully, me and you will get involved because if you ever need sax, no problem. You know of I've got course. you. Of course. Now I'm You're producing right? more on the house mm-hmm. side. So I have a, a track already signed by Universal Music Brazil um, uh-huh. and distributed by DJ Sound. Um, the release was supposed to be now in February, but they needed to change due to some issues they have internally. They just uh, mm-hmm. told us yesterday. This track uh, is a collaboration between myself and Vanderson XVR. Right. Xavier from Brazil. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, he lives in Rio and we collaborated and did this track together. And it's called Love Again. Love it. Yeah. And mm. is more on the house side. And everywhere okay. I have I have played this track. It's so catchy, the lyrics that everyone sings along and it's so so cool. So it's been what really a good. special moment. I mean, as anybody who writes music and you're there and you can play it out and you see everyone react how you react to music. It's money can't buy that feeling when you see people and they connect with the track you've you've written and what you've done as a performance. So, man, Diane, this has been amazing. I love this. I'm so happy I've come up with this idea of doing podcasts because I've got to know a lot more about you that I wouldn't have known. And uh, thank you for sharing with us and my audience. And uh, I definitely know this ain't going to be the last one because... There's so much more areas which you've just touched on that I wanted to go in, well, but I've got to respect the, the listener's attention span. Before I go, I just want to say one more thing. Yeah, of course. Because it's really important to me. Um, back in September last year, I managed to bring uh, Kuro, because you know I have my own brand, right? Batida Perfeita. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Batida Perfeita uh, is going to be back at Ministry of Sound this Saturday the 3rd. So for people right. listening and they want to come, that mm-hmm. would be amazing. Um, Baby Box Takeover with my DJs playing uh, at the Baby Box for my party, Batida Perfeita for the second time at Ministry of Sound. Mm-hmm. And last year, I did a collaboration with other promoters from Brazil called Batuki. Mm-hmm. And we brought Kuro, which is a DJ that she's doing a huge success, like opening shows for Black Coffee, um, Kane Music, uh, Rampa. So she's like super well, um, how can I say, musically representing our country, like with the Afro house, like really deep. Okay. Yeah, with yeah. Lots of African influences and I mm-hmm. loved it. So we managed to bring bring her to play to this to this party Batuki we were organizing uh, in September. And mm-hmm. now she is paying back the favor. So she's taking me to play in Brazil, in Curitiba, at uh, RW Club in Curitiba on the 22nd of March. So this is my first show in Brazil alongside this huge DJ, Kuro. Wow. 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 And going back to the ministry, is this going to be a regular thing for your, your crew to be playing at ministry? I hope so. The first one okay. was in, uh, the first takeover, it was in August last year, on 19th of August. Right. And now we have this first takeover of the year, but we are in negotiation to make this to become like a regular residency for Bachida Perfeita. Man, I cannot wait to see this. The vibe is amazing. And I can't wait to see how this progresses and everything you do, how it progresses. Um, I'm going to leave all the details and the links to all your socials um, with my vi- uh, video. And I just want to say thank you so much. Thanks. It's a pleasure. And I can't wait. And hopefully we get to jam it out again this year. 
I'm sure we would. We'll just have to wait and see what of aligns. Of course we will. I'm, I'm sure you will. 100%. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. You take care. All right. Thank you so much Thanks, guys. for having me. Thank you so My much pleasure. for everyone listening. It was such a pleasure. Thank you very pleasure. much. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you.